I think is that in the book of Psalms he mm. mentions that the good person gives the other cheek. Yes, so well, he's yes, always going. Yes. He's giving to his beta his his cheek. It's, it's in the, I, I, I translate it badly, but this is what's... No, that's right, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So it's like this, yes. Of course, the remarkable thing about Christ is that he always goes... Everything he says has a justification in the existing book of the law. He says, he says things which are startlingly new, but they're all thoroughly orthodox, and, and you find a scriptural basis for everything he says. Christ was Jew. Of course, he was. They, they tried... Uh, Hitler tried to turn him into a kind of Chris, uh, into a kind of Gentile, kind of the the, the illegitimate son of a, of a Roman centurion. But of course, Christ is a Jew, yeah. and uh, Christianity is, is is a form of Judaism. I, I agree hundred uh, percent. I would say that the reason why why many Jews did not accept Christianity. I mean, there may be many reasons. One of the reasons is that they thought that what he preaches is almost impossible, really, ever to practice. Mm -hmm. And since it's impossible, they thought, why, why preach something which cannot be done? But what the Jews preach is also impossible to, to practice. All preaching is... is, is that's, it, that's impossible, too. Yeah, that's yeah. impossible. Uh, of too, course. Yes. yes. That is what uh, Peter was saying uh, in Jerusalem after the death of Christ, that we cannot... Uh, the, the Jews went to these new Gentiles who have become Christians, they must be circumcised and they must follow our dietary laws. And uh, he would say, we find this very difficult. Why should we impose our difficulties on them? I think that's where the split began, where, where the division began between the Jews and the Christians. Uh, the, the, attempt to, uh, to, the attempt to spread Christianity, of course, was a failure. Uh, this book records the failure, Paul's failure. He couldn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't, convert the Jews, so he tried to convert any easier people, the Gentiles, it was a failure. I think his disciples actually tried it more than he did. They tried, yes, but so Paul was a yeah, big, inte Paul, big intellectual, yeah, probably yeah. trouble. Yeah. A big intellectual, yes, just without, without much compassion. Yeah. That's what you mean, you need compassion, not only... You can't, you can't do anything without it. Right. Come. Let's go to your book, Mr. Burgess, the, 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 the Kingdom of the Wicked. Yes. Uh, uh, and let's uh, start by Mr. Um, your, the Emperor Tiberius. Uh, yes. He said something, I mean, he was a cruel one, yes. <laughs> terrible, so terrible person. And uh, somewhere he's, he says something like, um, this, the pleasure of the, the pleasures of the senses yes. um, is the only thing that can ease the torments of the uh, of spirit the of the of the mind. Yes. yes. Well, of course, that uh, uh, Tiberius did not say that in, in historical fact. That was said in a novel by Oscar Wilde. Uh, I think it was Lord Henry Wotton says to young Dorian Gray that the pleasures of the, the, the torments of the soul can only be healed by the pleasures of the senses. And the torments of the senses can only be healed by the soul. Uh, the, the point about the book, uh, I, we, I, we don't want to discuss the book, but uh, this, is, this is a wonderful example of an aphorism. Uh, I had a review of this book in England by a professor of Latin who said, Mr. Burgess is wrong here. And, uh, and I said, the whole book is a mess of anachronism. Uh, but uh, I was putting into the mouth of Tiberius uh, what was already there in a novel by Oscar Wilde. Uh, do, is that true? Do you want to know whether that's true? I don't know whether it's true. I don't know whether it's true, but uh, the point I was trying to make is that we've, all, we've always been aware of this division between the body and the, the nervous system and, the, and this, alter, this other thing called the soul. Can they be brought together? Are they always fighting? Can they be reconciled? That was a question. I, I don't know any answer. Unless our program is called the, the Tribune of the Senses. <laughs> Tribune of the Senses? Yes. Yeah. Tribune of the Senses. Senses. A very nice title. Well... <laughs> What is the tribune of the census, if I may ask you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't answer. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. good. It sounds good. good. It sounds good. It sounds good. Of course, they contribute something to the census. Mm. They're not all neutral. No, but I mean, 
to to um, think as uh, Mr. Tiberius did mm. uh, that uh, that that leads to to uh, I don't know what sodomy or whatever. Well, I, I think this was just uh, one of the big questions that were being raised in the time of Tiberius, the first century after the death of Christ, uh, by the Stoics who were trying to find uh, some kind of philosophy without God uh, on which they could base their lives. And um, Stoics were aware of the pains of the body, the agonies of the body, the agonies of the soul, and they tried to cultivate an attitude to life of total indifference, no compassion, uh, no rebellion, but uh, a total indifference with a belief that there was some spark inside that soul which would survive the, the torment, the dissolution. And that I would say that Spinoza tried to create a God without compassion and without pity because he says it all the time that God has no, no emotions. So he, since he has no emotions, he can have no compassion. Mm -hmm. But it's, ter it's very difficult to accept something like this. A great power, great knowledge, knows everything, a great psychologist, and he has no compassion. He sees a little baby uh, burning in a, in a fire. <laughs> he sees nothing. Well, the, 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 the answer is, uh, the, the terrible answer, of course, that uh, uh, God has free will. God is a, is a free, is the only free of being. Course. And the, his greatest gift to humanity is this same freedom, which means that we're free to torture and to kill, and he won't interfere. It's a very unsatisfactory answer, but it's the answer that uh, many theologians give. I think. Uh, wh why, were, why were millions of Jews killed? Why didn't God intervene? Because the Nazis had free will, and I could not stop them having free will. I could not intervene. He has given, uh, he, according to Jewish tradition, before God gave the human being uh, free will, he asked the advice of the angels. And they said, don't, don't go into this adventure or adventure because you may regret it. More or less, the Talmud doesn't say you may regret it, but anyhow, the angels said so. But God did not listen to the angels, and he gave humanity free will, knowing that it's a dangerous weapon. It can work both ways, in the good way and the bad way. Yeah. So this is how the Talmud tries to explain the same thing that Mr. Burgess... No, well, it, 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 well, we, we don't have that delight. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know that delightful corollary. To, uh, that's beautiful. Yes, it's uh, there. That, that, the God, that God yes. was uh, aware that uh, yes, somebody did. Yes, he knew but, that, that he was going to... But know. this has been the big... Uh, I th I, I, it seems to me this is the big problem. It's a theological problem, but it's also a social problem. We've had for many thousands of years. Are we free or are we not free? Librum, I, I think St. Augustine called it Librum, uh, Librum Arbitrium, uh, the freedom of choice. Now, we had a British heretic called Palladius, uh, who at the time of St. Augustine said that uh, uh, man is not free, uh, man is predestined uh, to uh, be what he has to be because God knows everything. And this has been one of our problems. Are we free? If God knows everything, we cannot be free because he knows what we are going to do. Uh, I remember there was an Irish, an Irish Catholic writer called Sean O'Fyland who was always worried about this problem. And one day in New York, he was in a taxi, and he suddenly thought he had the solution, that God loves mankind so much that he refuses uh, to foresee their actions. But when they have performed their actions, then he knows and remembers that they always knew. It's nice. It's a nice, nice idea, but we can't yeah. we can't. But it is considered in philosophy and in religion a contradiction. If God can can for